Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with chapter 2 of Dangan Rompen, Apun Hasa Dangan Rangan Trigger Happy Havoc Edition. So, as we begin straight away, let's interact with the bathroom door and Makoto's going to be like, Hey my god, she's really got stabbed. And fair play to the cleanup crew, if that was just um, uh, Nagu, Pagu, whatever the bear's name is. That's a hell of a cleanup job, I'll give him that. But anyway, yes, this is chapter 2 out of chapter 6. This is going to take us roughly about an hour and a half, one hour forty, something like that. A couple more free times. And of course, a whole lot of dialogue because it is a visual novel. It does make all the sense when you think about it. So for now, what's going to happen then is we're going to end up here back in the dining hall with the remaining students and we're just going to go ahead and discuss the situation. So as usual then, remember... Uh, just to be pressing the B button, that gets through the dialogue a bit quicker. Or the A button if you're just trying to read it as quickly as you can. Whichever way, I'm just going to get through it quickly, okay? Honestly. So then. Announcement. It is now... <laughs> Don't fuck with me. So, all these haircuts then are getting a lot more frazzled as they begin to realise what the hell is actually going on. Um, also, with this one, we basically passed a lot of the tutorials now, so we are all good. There will be new features and mechanics, of course, that will pop up. Of course, I will let you know and uh, guide you through them. But for the tutorials, we are basically all knowing and all seeing. We are as powerful as Sakura, old Heather Swanson, Macho Man Randy Savage right there. Anyway, so we're in the gym, we're having a little meeting here with Monokuma. Basically, what he's... If he, if the dialogue's going too quick and you want to know what's going on, he's basically explaining that after every trial, more of the school will become available to us, so each new chapter, a new floor for us. And that is pretty much it. <laughs> Got it! So for now then, what we are going to do is just leave the gym area... And that is exactly what we're going to do. And then we're going to leave the trophy room as well. We'll uh, see Hippie Haircut later on. But for now, what we're going to do... In here, in the main hallway, we're going to turn left. And we're going to see Kayotaka Ishamaru. And that is exactly who we're not going to speak to. But this stair gate was... Um, or this staircase was gated up before. And of course, now it's not. So, that's where we're heading. Into a new floor. Right, so where we're going to go then is the pool area. So if you press Y, of course, remember to get your maps up with the Y button. Turn directly left from the top staircase to go into the pool area. And then what you're going to see is the three ladios. Hello, Asahina. And we're going to see boys and girls locker rooms and the Gatling gun as well. So what we are going to do is examine the boys locker room door, which is on the right. It is the blue door. Of course, you can't put a colour on anything these days. Look, if you say that a boy is blue and a girl is pink, you are going to be just the epitome of angry. People are just going to be so angry at you for putting a colour with a saucepan and stuff. You know, I am just joking. But still, interacting with that and this whole dialogue is going to happen. Basically says, if you're a boy and you try going into the girls, you're going to get Gatling gunned. If you're a girl going into the boys, you're going to get Gatling gunned square in the old nip-nips. You got it! Uh, I'm sorry. 
so then after that wonderful conversation ends, what we're going to do is press the B button and leave the area. We're going to go back to the hallway. Um, and the library is now on the same floor as the pool. So we can just turn directly around again. Press the I always press the Y button to show the map. I find it is just a lot easier. So go straight down here. The library is, of course, with the big book icon. Here it is. It's got a sign saying library and everything. So, oh, isn't that handy and very nice for us? So, a few things to examine after some more, a lot more dialogue. The first thing is the letter just in front of Chunky Erection Haircut Hirafimu, or whatever his name is. There it is. Indeed. Is that right? Hmm. It would seem... So, in other words... Hmm. 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 And after everyone stops yammering, if we turn the camera with the right stick to the left, you're going to see the laptop just in front of Kyoko. Old Kyoko Pops right there. So, interact with the laptop. So... Yes, indeed. Okay. Well, I see. Quiet down it. You hear me? <laughs> Are you okay? What? Hey, come on. What? Stop fucking around. You piece of. So then. Also, if you're wondering why I'm getting through this a little bit quicker, basically, I'd already played about an hour of this second chapter, and then I decided, or my recording decided, to completely disappear off my computer. So, I was kind of slightly in a rage <laughs> playing this first hour again. Uh, so, if you're wondering why it's going a bit quicker than I usually <laughs> go pace-wise, that's probably why, because I got pissed off. So, uh, Monokuma Theatre there, um, yeah, you know, Monokuma just yammering on about boring bullcrap again. Although we're still having a chance to die, which is, um, you know, still quite pan-crappingly fun. So now we have to go and get breakfast with everyone. We can't transport our way there, teleport our way there, so we have to leave through the door. And remember to turn left and head into the dining room for more conversation about... How Hifumi, the big uh, erection head Chungus, is not the first one to die, even though he probably couldn't run that fast. That's just an observation. I just, I wouldn't be able to run fast with a cobra pie belly like that. Just saying. Let's see. So far, the best thing that's happened in this game is that scream and that dialogue, your little piggy will bring it right out. Hilarious. <laughs> huh? I think me. 
Listen to me! What's your problem? Um... Well, then... Uh, uh. Right, now we have to go and we, uh, sadly we have to walk to the library now. We're gonna go and find a Bayakuya. So, let's leave the area again by pressing the B button. And we'll try that twice if you want. There we go. Right, good job. So, for some reason then, um, if you try and... Even though we've been to the library once... I think we've we been to the library? In fact, yeah, we did go to the library. Even though we did go to the library, as you can see, there is no green exclamation mark. Which means... Well, when we get there eventually. Uh, but there it is. But basically, no green exclamation mark, which means we have to actually walk there ourselves. So I'll keep the map on just so you know where we're going. So we're going to turn around here and go through the gates. The metal gates of life, which looks like an exit. But, you know, you're going to get Gatling gunned up the button all stuff. Um, the stairs are in the bottom left corner of the map. So just follow the map along into the middle bit. Keep going and then basically just turn right here. And there it is. There is another way that you can go up. There are another set of steps, but they are still gated for some reason. So, well, let's search. So just go straight, more or less straight all the way, and the library once again is alright. Yeah. So again, it's just another whole bunch of dialogue as we speak to Bayakuya. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Man is just a douchebag. God. Nobody reads books like an absolute douche like that. No one. No. <sighs> Damn you! <sighs> Are you okay with it? Actually... So in other... <laughs> what? <sighs> Naturally. Not possible. <laughs> Don't make me your... Oh! No. What? It's because... It's horrific! What? Um... Come on! Uh, I'm s- <laughs> Piece of shit! <laughs> you son of a bitch! Just a second! Hmm. But... <laughs> Don't fuck with... So here we are then, at the first bit of free time. Now there are two specific characters that we are going to go and hang out with this time. The first one will be... I mean, you can either do it either way. Either Toko or Hifumi, or the Ratchet Head. But we're just going to interact with Tacomo, Tacomo, <laughs> Tacomo, uh, Toko, since her she's in a bedroom, uh, more or less to the right of us. So let's leave the area, turn direct, turn directly around. Sorry, um, I don't know what happened in my throat there, but turn directly around, go up, and then on the right hand side you're going to see Toko's door. There it is. So now remember, in the first chapter, in the first video, I said there may be some questions, and we may be able to give some presents. Uh, with Toko and Hifumi, we're not going to give any presents, but after this we're going to hang out with Celeste three times, and we're going to give her two presents, which means we're going to go to the school store. Uh, but for now, we're not going to give a present to Toko, because she is... I mean, she's a bit nuts. Uh, to be fair, we're all a bit nuts, mine, for all our particular reasons. Even though she got that seductive smile, there's no present for you. 
sorry about that. Right, now, like I said, yeah, the, all the characters should be in the same spot right now, that is in the same time as we're playing along right now, if that made sense, which it probably didn't. But basically all the characters should be in the same spot at the same time that we are. So now uh, we've hung out with uh, Toko. We are now going to go into our maps and Hifumi, as as is for me, should be for you, is hanging out in the boys' bathroom here on the dormitory first floor. There it is. Now there he is. You can't see his erection head in the photo. But when we, when we go there, jump straight in and just do the same thing. So choose to hang out with Hifumi here, but do not give him a present just yet if you have one. Yeah. Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. Good morning! Now remember, you can actually hang out with whoever you want, however many times that you want to. Don't have to do the same as me. I only do it just because of uh, some of the skills comes in mega handy. So what we're going to do then is go for a little bit of a broke post, or as my daughter likes to call it, Gressus. Which is just hilarious to me. She's still only three, by the way. It's not like me who can't pronounce English properly. She is actually still a toddler, so I'll give her the benefit of the doubt for that. Uh, anyway, more talking with Asahina and Bobby Sheena and Alan Shearer and all that for now. Count on it. What? 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 Hey, come on! <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah. Thank you. But, um... <laughs> you know? I see. Thank you. Right, so back in the free time then. We are now going to hang out. We're going to have three free time options, and we're going to hang out with Celeste on every single one of them. Uh, the first time she should be in the dining hall here in the dormitory hall, so that is uh, the dormitory first floor, sorry. The dining hall, so that's where we're going to head. Like I said, we're going to hang out with her, but for the first time we're not going to give her a present. So just simply hang out with her, have a great time, try not to get put off by her big uh, turkey twizzler haircut. <laughs> Although how the hell do you make it look like turkey twizzlers and still make it look good? I wouldn't know, I've barely got any hair, so I don't have to give a crap. So, we're not going to give her a present just yet. But the next time we do, we're going to go down to the school store and I will explain exactly how the Mono Mono machine works, where you get a Perosens. And in fact, let's go ahead and do that right now, shall we? <laughs> right, so let's go into our map then, again pressing the X button, of course. The school store is located on the uh, Hope's Peak first floor. It's in a little room just there, so basically in the middle of the 
first floor. So we can head there straight away. Now, obviously depending on how many coins you've got, what you can do when you click on it, you can choose to spend one coin, two coins, three coins. You can literally choose uh, as many coins as you want to spend. Um, and you do that by pressing down on the left stick to choose as many coins as you want to spend. What you're also going to see is, in the bottom right corner, the repeat option. So, we do need every present for an achievement. We need to get 114 different presents. So, obviously, as you can see, the more coins that you go down... So, see if you keep putting in one coin. The repeat of you getting the same small thing um, will just keep doubling up. So, obviously, if I keep putting in one coin... The chances that I will get the same present will increase and increase. So obviously the more coins that you put in, as you can see, the repeat of the same present is zero because I don't have that particular present just yet. Uh, so, I mean, it's easy enough to sort of get into and get used to. Now, in terms of presents, what Celeste likes is things like dandelions, flowers, uh, bracelets, brooch, br br brooches, is it? Brooches? Um, rose... Anything with a rose, I think there's like a rose flask tea thing, a rose in a like tube or something. So what I would highly advise against, or highly advise doing, is just getting, trying to get enough presents and keep spending enough coins with 0% until you get, like I said, it, we're looking for a sort of cute present. And then we can go and talk to Celeste right there, who is in the, um, basically just right next to our bedroom in the dining hall area. There she is. Um... Now, again, the first time I played through this, I was able to give her the brooch. So we spent some time with her. I actually gave her a brooch the first time, and then I gave her um, the dan either the dandelion, I think. Was it the dandelion or the... Yes, it was, in fact, the dandelion the second time. And I was able to get um, two skill points, plus the um, raise, uh, her skill. Now... I've just given her sunflower seeds. For the love of God, do not give her sunflower seeds. She hated it, which means we miss out on a skill point. So you've got to give these people a present that they either like or love in order to get one of their skills or one of their skill points. So I actually, like I said, the first time I went through it, I gave her a dandelion and a brooch. Or the brooch, sorry, it was the brooch first. And she liked it, which gave us the, the skill point. And then... The next time that we uh, hang out with her, I was able to give her uh, the dandelion or whatever I did. And then I was able to get the skill point raise. Oh, uh, the, sk the skill raise. So, just a quick explanation there on the presents. But here we are then. We've had to go back to the dining room. And what's going to happen is, we are now going to speak to Mondo. And we are going to, again, uh, press the Y button. Now, I did, did actually just skip it. So, don't worry if you did skip it. You can just speak to him again. Now we can press the Y button for the reaction, press the A button on witness, and then what's going to happen is, there's just going to be a whole, you know, whole dick off challenge. Who's got the biggest wiener between these two? Uh, you know, who's got the, who's got the tastiest nut sacks and all that jazz? You know how, you know how some men are, <laughs> douchebags. Um, but yeah, so basically they go into a whole big bit of competition, and all we're doing for the time being is just slamming through the dialogue. Son of a Ridiculous! Stop fucking around. Hey, Mondo, you can take that. <laughs> That's probably. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. Soon the doors. In a true competition.
Good morning! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> what? <laughs> you hear me? Ain't the without a doubt. Piece of shit. Got it. I see. So now, bros are bros, bros. Bro, bro. So that's all they needed was just to compare wiener sizes and then they're best bros. Always handy, that. So, after all that uh, bit of cutscene and dialogue, we're back in our room and Toko Moloko is going to come back in and we're going to speak to her. Um, and when we do speak to her, uh, to actually not interact with the bathroom door, we're going to pursue the g -g go somewhere with me. <laughs> Go somewhere with me. So again, of course, press the Y button, then the A button, and go somewhere with me. And they end up going to the library, and all we're going to do then is speak to Bayakuya. So, also, by the way, I hope that the explanation about the presence um, wasn't too over the top. Again, I know sometimes I can go over the top, but hopefully you sort of got exactly what I meant. And that the presents, of course, are going to be random for you as they are for me. So you'll get random presents. But hopefully with the Celeste thing right there, you managed to get it, give her enough cute present that she gave you an extra skill point, which means you will get the raise um, skill the next time you hang out with her. If you don't, and you did give her something that she didn't like, honestly, do not worry about it, because, like I said, we will be getting all the report cards filled out and everything um, in the school mode after we complete the base game. So don't panic if you missed it, like I just did the second time there. Don't make me repeat myself. So this is it then, and this is exactly what we're going to do. We get free time, like I said, twice already. We're going to hang out with Celeste for the third and final time. Hopefully, as I said earlier, um, you are going. You've already given her something that she liked. Like I said, whether it was a dandelion, a flower, a rose, a brooch, the love ring. I think I've got as well. As long as you gave her one of those, then you should get the skill. Um, the her skill which is called raise which basically gives you I think an extra 10% mono coins every time you find one or every time we earn some so we're just going to go back to the store again if you feel like obviously remember if you press the X button you can have a look at what presents you've got if you feel like there's nothing there if it's just like scissors and crap like that and you don't think she's going to like it then of course what we're going to do is just head back to the store here and keep going until something Looks like <laughs> something that she would enjoy. Obviously, bow and arrows and stuff like that, she's not going to enjoy. I think I actually end up getting a rose in a tube this time. Um, but again, like I said, if you grab a few, grab a few presents here, press X button, go into your um, presents and just have a look, just to see what you've got. And if you think, if you're confident, because again, like I said, it's going to be all random for you as well as it is for me. So this is what I give her now, the rose in a tube. Um, but yeah, it's always worth just having a quick double check of the presents, just to make sure that you've got something that you think she will like. There's nothing really uh, sort of online, I don't think. I couldn't find anything for some reason anyway, of um, a list of what they like and love. You just sort of got to go with it and hope they uh, do enjoy it. So Hope's Peak first floor then, in the first hallway, Celeste should be there for you as well. And she will be straight in front of us. So, obviously, what we're going to do is hang out with her, and then we're going to give her a present. Most unfortunate. There is nothing to be done.
So the rose were rosé in vitro. Yes, I am one romantic man, huh? But give Turkey Twizzler a haircut then the rose in vitro. Now, it will tell you that you've unlocked the skill raise, which will automatically be there. If, like I said, if you didn't and you only managed to get the skill point, honestly, that is absolutely fine as well. We'll get the achievements and stuff later on. Um, if you do want to hang out with her for a third time in the next chapter, because this is, this is the last free time, you can do that to get the raise, of course. That, it does come in handy. It definitely does come in handy to give you, um, as I said, 10%, uh, I think it is, uh, yeah, 10% more mono coins as you find them and as you earn them. So, it is definitely worth doing. If you missed out this time, just grab her next time. And that is fine and dandy. Otherwise, we're pretty much all squared away now for the free time encounters for this chapter. Uh, now what's going to happen is... We is going to go for a little meeting in the gym. So he's going to give us some extra motivation. Basically, he's bored. He wants more murders to happen. So he's going to reveal some secrets. Unless somebody kills someone. Which is nice. memories and secrets are all contained Perhaps. Uh, oh. 
Um. Huh? Hmm. <laughs> what the heck? Naturally. <laughs> so, by the way, if you didn't know what secret uh, Makoto had, it was that he wet the bed, that we wet the bed until fifth grade. That's not really an embarrassing secret. I still do that sometimes after a, you know, heavy night out or too much water. We've all pissed the bed as an adult, so don't even try to deny it. Right, we can go into the map, but we cannot actually get to the pool. So we actually have to walk there again, and you know what? Man, j just kill me now. If i got to do any more walking around this bloody school. Oh, oh stairs. Ah, oh, kill me now. So we're just going to head straight for the gate. Because the pool is on the second floor. So we're going to go for the gate onto the first floor right here. And then we're going to go to the bottom left corner of the map where it says 2F, of course, on the stairs. So straight from here. And then we're going to turn right. And then a left arini, right obini, up the old wooden pairs, job banana, oh done. But this is where we are going to get into the big stuff, so a little bit quicker than the first chapter. Uh, turn directly left to go into the pool area, of course, of course. And then we are going to, when we get here, we're going to examine the boys locker room once again. Yai Chihuahua! Chihiro is dead! Oh no 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 no! Uh, just the scream that we let out there, Makoto, was hilarious in itself as well. But yes, Chihiro is dead, so we've got another murder to... Another murder to investigate. Come on, come on, I've had a fucking enough now. Come on. Hey, bu- So, let us start doing some moidier investigations. Right, what we're going to do is examine um, the dead body. Which, of course, there is only one dead body there, so you should know what that's happening. There we go. Now, after this one, what we're going to do is interact with the bloody dumbbell, which is on the floor, right next to Sakura Heather Swanson. Old Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, I'm going to smoke him. So there is a blood stain on that as well, so that'll go straight into your truth bullet file. And then after this one, we're going to interact with the blood on the carpet next to Sakura. Remember, blood is purple as to not give off um, a violent something, even though this is a, an incredibly violent game. Poster on the wall then behind Sakura, the old big boibs. The old big boy supermodel right there, she's got a bit of a stain on her face, and I'm on about blood stain this time. Then interact with the poster on the wall behind uh, Sakura. Uh, sorry, the bloodlust on the wall, sorry. Bloodlust, which is written on the wall right there. And then speak to Sakura herself to get the statement. I'm only here for one thing and one thing only, and that is to not die. Mm. Mm. Hmm. 
So, when you speak to Sakura, make sure to speak to Mondo as well. Old cornrow haircut, sweet corn head. Just to get his statement as well. <laughs> what? Let's go. So we've got to work with Admiral Douchebag for a bit, but that's fine. So what we're going to do is interact with the girls' locker room key card reader. So not quite the door, but the card reader next to the door. What? Did you call for me? That's right. You need some? Yep. <laughs> Unbe... So in other such So now then, Admiral Douchebag has brought us to the main hall. Now what we're going to do when we stop talking to Admiral Douche, spin your camera to the right, with of course the right stick. We're going to need to turn right, and the mailbox, which is just sitting all alone right there, there it is. So basically what's going to happen now is we're going to find three handbooks that belong to the deaders, the dead students of life. Uh, Sayaka's and Junko's turn, but the third one has broken in suspicious circumstancerinos. Uh, basically, they're indestructible, apart from the one weak point which makes it unindestructible. Thank you, Monokuma. What? Very strange. I see. Damn it! No! That's impossible! I can't hear you! What? Hmm. What? That's fine. So after that fun bit is done, what we're going to do is uh, spin the camera back to the left and then we're going to go ahead and speak to Bayakuya again. Bayakuya, alo alo, Bayakuya, togami gami. So speak to him and then we're going to pursue a couple of options here. So the first one is going to be Genocide Jack. And there it is, so press the Y button of course here and then choose Genocide Jack. And then we need to speak to Bayakuya to Gami Gami once more. And go past the option with Genocide Jack. And then we're going to pursue the word basis. So go past this, and here is basis. So stick your faces on the basis. It's all. I don't have time to. So, next up, um, Hina, Asahina, is going to want an emergency. And that is what we're going to pursue. We are going to pursue emergency. It's from the Drainage International Commission from Springfield. The boys. Are you sticking pingers somewhere, mate? Nah, Dad, he was just Brad Simpson. He'll get... Uh, anyway, so after um, choosing the emergency option from Springfield, the boys. Uh, basically, we followed Hina, we're gonna now check on Toko, so if we turn slightly to the right, pan the camera to the right ever so slightly, there is Asahina. Oh, Asabubi. And then after we have a little chat with her, we're going to examine Toko's door, which is just behind her. So examine that, and of course a little few more things are gonna happen.
Oh, uh, nothing. Leave me a lot of... So, since Broski ain't budging, we are going to speak to Bayakuma and try and get Toto Gami 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 To, or oh, Gamto, you want to give them a wash, uh, to speak to Toko himself. Go on, Admiral Gami To. What do you want? What is Yaku Yaku? What? Stop talking. Hmm. Let's go. Bruh, Toko is losing it. Losing it! Toko pops herself. She is, yeah, she is losing her mind. But anyway, uh, Asambaya Kuya Gamito has gone back into the library, but we're going to interact now with the door on the left, which is the archives. Um, and we're going to have a few more things to examine as well. Uh, so, knobby knob in the archive room. And then what we're going to do then is interact with... There's going to be an empty box just in front of the step ladder there on the left-hand side. So that is what we're going to interact with first. As long as Admiral Gamito douchebag stops talking. So there it is, just on the bottom left. Um, obviously, remember, if you want to, press the white button there to use your observation. Just to see what you can interact with. So there's the empty box, then we're going to interact with the desk lamp, which is just to the right of the step ladder. There she blows. So interact with that, and then what we're going to do is interact with all three bookcases. The one behind Bayakuya himself, and the two uh, which are to, just to the left of it. But you've got to interact with all three of them in order to get the next conversation dialogue skipping. So after you've interacted with all three bookcases, we can now pursue the option Reviewed them multiple times. So eventually it'll come up and there it is. So press the Y button of course Press the A button and that is review them multiple times hmm. So in other words Other words. <laughs> Interesting. Such ignorant. So, nothing else to do here. All we've got to do is speak to Bayakuya once more. We don't have to interact with any books or anything. Just speak to Bayakuma once more. And then this will be the last time that we actually have to chill out with him for five, which is fantastic. Because you and your gammy toes, mate, you get the hell out of here. So, in other words... Let's go. <laughs> I don't have time to play with you. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
So with Admiral Gamto gone, now what we're going to do is head to the pool area. So just turn directly around. Again, press the white button if you want your maps up. But we're just going to head to the pool, which is of course in the same area as the floaty library. I mean, it's just a normal library, it's not really a floaty one. I don't know why I said floaty. Probably because my head's floating with the clouds right now. But anyway, speak to Hifumi. Old direction nugget head right there. What he's going to tell us is that Celeste is now in the warehouse by the dorms. And we're actually coming up quite close now towards the class trials. Getting it? I'm sure. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it was... Hmm. But before we go ahead and speak to Celeste, we're going to go into the boys' locker room after speaking to Hifumi. I don't know why I said it like that, but there we go. So, we're going to examine the poster here, which is the Tornado Boy Band one on the wall. So, just right where the pull-up machine is right there. Um, interact with the Tornado. Of course, if you don't go to the gym, you won't know what a pull-up machine is, but it's basically on the right side of the screen. So, have a look at the stain on the carpet now, which is on the, obviously, only carpet. Now, that is what I thought would be blood, but it's actually protein coffee, apparently. Uh, so if you see the camera right there, as long as you've got the tornado and the coffee stain done, we are good to go. We can now head into the girls' locker room, which is not this way. I accidentally just went into the pool area, uh, so just back out. If you accidentally done what I just done there, back out of the pool, and then back out of the boys' locker room. Um, actually forgot to edit that bit out, but hey, since we're here, you know, we're all good. So, turn to the left. Now we can go into the girls' locker room, which is fine. It's an investigation. We're not going to get Gatling gunned up the butt nuggets. Um, still creepy that she's still hanging there. So, speak to Kyoko Pops. And what she's going to say is basically the victim's handbook is missing. And that we need to check over the dead body again. Now, why would you want us to check over the dead body again? Well, it'll all be coming up very, very soon. So after this bit then, we've got uh, the Ch Chihiro's e-handbook uh, in the truth bullet. So examine the dead body once again. Kyoko Pops, yeah, thank you very much. So it's a cord, it's not a rope, it's a cord, which is very interesting. And then after we do this then, we need to interact with the poster with blood on it again. So big boy B model, um, her face and her... But, but, well, her boibles. Just interact with that one again. So, now of course, he, he, these days you can have whatever poster you want up, but in the boys locker room there would have been Big Boy B model, and in girls locker room there should have been Tornado, so it's been switched again. Anyway, speak to Sakura Heather Swanson, old macho man Randy Sakura, and what she's going to say is basically she's going to tell us about her drink stain randomly disappearing. Of course. So what we're going to do then, we're going to head to the library now. So you don't actually have to leave the girls' locker room. We can actually just go into the maps. And we can, I'm pretty sure now, just be able to go straight up to the library. But if you're not, of course, I actually forgot there that we're on the same floor as the library. So we can just back out and head to the library. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were on the first floor there for some particular reason. My head is literally floating with the clouds today. It's the hot weather, man. Us Brits are not used to it. Before you start laughing at us again. So examine the desk lamp. Don't examine the cord. Examine the desk lamp, which is, of course, the lamp on the desk. Now go back into the archives. It can be a bit tricky there. I, I chose the books twice for some reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of hard to get the desk lamp. But once you've got that, and we, that's been added to the truth bullet ting, we can now go into the archives door on the left. And then we are just going to interact with the right-hand side of case, which would be the Genocide Jack file, or it would have been, except this time it is gone. So just interact with the uh, right bookcase once, it'll tell us that the book is gone. The ones on the left, you don't actually have to, but I did it just in case, but it actually makes no difference. As long as you've interacted with that right-hand bookcase once, that's as golden as Nuggety Bow Bows.
So, here we go then. Now we are, are coming up to the end of the investigation. So, we're going to go to the warehouse, which is on the first floor of the, not dormitory, but it is on the first floor. Uh, oh, it is the dormitory. Sorry, the, the warehouse is in the dormitory first floor. Sorry about that. I thought it was on Hope's Peak. Uh, but Celeste should still be here. So, we're going to speak to Celeste to get her statement. And then we've just got one more statement to do before the class trials begin again. No. Hmm? Oh, um, what? Because I can see a blue track jacket. Well, I'd better... <sighs> yes, indeed. Right, one last time we're going to go to the dining hall now, which again should obviously be on the same floor, should literally be more or less the, the room straight over from the warehouse. So go ahead and speak to Bounty Bounty Asahina, just to get her statement, and then we get teleported right in front of the big red door and the class trial shall be Gwyn. You remember? What are you gonna do? So, of course, to start, you need to interact with the elevator just behind everybody, rather than speak to them all. So, Takagawi Nakapawi is not happy. Um, but, well, who gives a tough mongol's titty? I was going to say monkey's titty there, but I don't know what happened. So, this is it. We begin again. Now, just before we get into this, I want to know who you actually think has done it in terms of clues, if you've been really looking at the clues and everything, who do you think has actually done it? Be interesting to know if you got it before finding out. So let me know if you did. But anyway, let's get into it, shall we? So, first of all then, what we're going to do, we are... Now, if you manage to get the whole thing with Celeste and you manage to get the two skill points down, uh, you should have um, six skill points that we can use. So let's go into our set skills. What we're going to do, we're going to pick the vocabulary option for now, providing, of course, that you hung out with Toko earlier on. Um, that basically increases the bullet capacity. There is vocabulary right there. There is the handiwork one as well, but we don't actually need that just yet, so we're going to leave that blankety blank, blankety blank, and then we're going to finish the pro promotions. Now, uh, very quickly, I will begin by saying there is a thing called white noise. New few, a couple of new features. Now, white noise, it's basically purple lines of text um, that will pop up during the non-stop debates. Now, you've got to press the A button to get rid of those quote-unquote white noises. So, as we begin then, locker room dumbbell straight away. I'll show you exactly what it means. So, what we're looking for first is hero speaking and iron pipe. So, I'll tell you where it is. Remember, it's the Y button to shoot. Just remember. So, now shoot iron pipe. Almost got rid of that. So that is the first answer done. Remember, if you manage to miss it, don't panic and worry yourself. Um, they will go around talking and talking once again. So don't worry if you miss it, of course. So for the next one then, this is where the um, 
it's called white noise, but it's just purple lines of text. So, you'll see exactly what I mean now. You can just avoid and shoot around them if you want, but there are two achievements for destroying 100 and 500 white noises. So you're going to see little bits of purple uh, text sort of float about the screen, and they can get in the way of your answer sometimes. So what you'll have to do is press the A button to shoot, shoot it away. Doing so gives you an extra second, but of course if you're playing on the two difficulties, easy or normal, that's fine. You shouldn't have to worry. Um, but anytime you see purple text, I highly advise just pressing the A button to shoot it away, and you'll see exactly what I mean now. Otherwise, um, you can just press the Y button as normal. So, we need to get Hina to be speaking, and the target shoot is no proof of it. So, there are the parts of white noise. So, we can press the A button when you see them. It adds a second, and that also counts as one towards... And, and as you can see right there... Um, I just got blocked off by that per bit of purple text. So, and again, it doesn't matter because we can just go around again. We've got plenty of time. So, remember, it is the target to shoot is no proof of it. But anytime you see the purple text, press the A button on it, and that just adds towards the 100 and 500. So, no proof of it now. So, you have to press the A button to shoot down the white noise. I'll just keep calling it white noise from now on. And then you have to press the Y button for no proof of it. Again, if you missed it, don't panic. It'll just go around again. Um, but that is basically the explanation there for the white noises. Remember, like I said, we've got up to 500. So anytime you see that, just shoot that. Now choose how the victim was positioned. So how the victim was positioned right there. And yeah, I've, so I've explained all white noise. So you should know what to do by now. That's all good. Next, we're going to play another game of Hangman's Gambit. Um, and again, you should have got, if you'd follow the first chapter in the first video guide, you should have got the damage, no damage achievement, which I highly advise doing because you can take damage quite easily this time. So, Hangman's Gambit, we're going for the word schizo. So we've got the H and I, so we need S, C, Z, and O. So try not to hit anything else. So it's S, C, Z, and O. And that will spell out schizo, which is not goodly. Is it because Genocide Jack? I think I read... They thought that... They oh. okay. And then next up, what we're going to choose is Her Behavior Changed. So then Her Behavior Changed. What is the one? A gun! You're talking about how she started acting totally... She was acting... Don't go assigning adjectives to my tongue without... Per Not to mention... <laughs> The reason she locked herself, it was to keep her. Toko was afraid. I do believe you know what she wants. Huh? She told me, and that trepidation. This is all a lie. You have only yourself to. You said that as long as you. You said if I. How many times do I have put? I, I try. What? Wow! Hello there. Is it me you were hoping? So you figured it out, huh? What, what the fuck is this? Not Toko. That's a loser name. <laughs> As they say. Yes, well, the world is behind every dark and <laughs> Um, Miss Jack, it, some of us think you might- Well, I'll tell you! Yes, yes. Of course it's not true! Huh? And another thing, the police and government- I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck walk. Sure I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, it's just kidding again! This should be enough to convince you. A motive? If someone didn't work with a secret- but maybe so apparently Toko gets her in a Harley Quinn out right there. All right, that's tidy, isn't it? Right now it's another truth bullet. We need Bayakuya to be speaking, and the answer is the modus operandi matches. Now we do it quite quickly because he talks quickly. So again, anytime you see white noise, press the A button to shoot it. 
And then when Bayakuya is talking, so yeah, literally any time you see it, it just adds towards the 100 and 500. Now Bayakuya is talking, the modus operandi matches, shoot that now. Ah, and once again, I managed to miss it. So again, that's fine. You're not going to take any damage. But remember, um, in fact, you know what, doing this, it just does help in terms of the white noise achievements there. But it is Bayakuya and the Modus Operandi matches. So I get this quite quickly now. This is the one. No, it's one. I murder with Let me rephrase that. So next up then, make sure to choose the victim's fatal injury. So it is the victim's fatal injury there. For one, the cause of death is in the according But to hear a pie, yes. Then the arrangement of the body. And then next up, choose what was used to suspend her. So what was used to suspend her? I got it! Do you remember what the killer used to What is your problem? Specifically? And guess what? I use my and 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 man? Huh? There's a pattern there! Figure that out! And then for another reasoning, we're going to choose because Chihiro was a girl. Chihiro was a girl. I got it! Is it because Chihiro was a Bingo! Well died right! In all the genocide... Ge they were all... That's right! The people I can't... I can't help it! I'm just, but now I'm on the fast track! So since Chihiro was a... What an Italian... Suddenly, I have too much. It's a different map. Slowly. Uh, and it's that. Who would go out of their way? Any scissors? Uh, okay, whatever. Are you sure about? Da, 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 da! That's right. Go ahead, tell me. But yeah. And now we have to sneakily choose someone. And what we're going to choose is Bayakoya Gamito. So make sure to choose a Bayakama, but a Bayakoya, sorry, Togami. There he is. Choose him. Here's my answer. Yakuya. It's possible you plus because the adorable glasses man was behind. I see. So now the. Hmm. You wanted to. So, this new um, element that has been added here to Truth Bullet, basically, um, we need to absorb what is called weak point by pressing and holding the Y button, and then when the next statement comes up, press the Y button once to um, basically deal it damage. It's, it's, it's because of a contradiction in statements is what we're talking about. So, first of all, we are going to press and hold the Y button when we see before we found the body, and that's Hina talking. So, right now, press and hold the Y button here, and you will absorb it, like so. Then we can just carry on, and then press the Y button once, when we get to Bayakuya saying the victim was Chihiro. So, very easy. Again, kind of confusing if you don't know what you're doing. But you've got to absorb one contradictive statement to shoot it at another. Basically, that is how that works. Right, my, it's time for another truth bullet. Next, it is a library desk lamp, and when Bayakuya is talking, it's the answer is, I've never seen that rope in my life. So remember to shoot all the purple dialogues as well, but when Bayakuya is talking, it is, I've never seen that rope in my life. So we are going to shoot right about now. So shoot. If the dialogue comes up, of course, the white noise, make sure to shoot that first, and then choose that option. Actually, I'm pr- That extent- Yaku- Went miss- And there's no way- I don't disagree! 
And next up, we are going to choose the scene of the crime. So the scene of the crime, and then we're going to do a little bit of evidencios. So in the girls' locker room. Well, that was awfully specific. Hey, don't just move on without. And the first bit of evidence then is the two locker room posters. So go and find the two locker room posters, probably in the uh, about the middle there. So press the Y button, of course, to present said item. <laughs> Sorry, Hufumi's face absolutely kills me. Uh, but that is the first piece of evidence. Uh, massive jugs. Sorry, I just seen to say massive jugs. Massive mimes. Massive milky makers. Somebody. Somebody's baby's very lucky. Um, right, anyway, it's the boys' locker room carpet is what we need the evidence now. So go ahead and find the boys' locker room carpet. There it is. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet. That's definitely the... But why would it... To move the murder scene from one lock... In other words, in order to... But by doing... I why would they fucking have... No, she did have... A And it is yet another truth bullet. Remember to um, shoot all the purple dialogue with A. Now what we're looking for is Hero saying Leon's handbook. So Leon's handbook is the answer in yellow that we're looking at. So shoot the purple dialogues. And remember it is Hero who is saying it. So here we go. Next up we are going to choose Leo's handbook. There it is. So smash that and that is the uh, truth bullet done. No, I don't think Chihiro. Oh, well. In other words, so Psst. you can't fix an E. Maybe it seems. Like There's no way. The girls' locker room. Already searched. I'd like you to examine. Be sure to examine. Examine. It's. No, it's a. So just leave. What is this? Um, that's not it. Okay. Be sure to check her. Her entire body. What? <laughs> what is it? Not possible. This is what. Is a boy. Ah, I see. What? Someone found Captain Winky. It's really. Chihiro was. Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know. Chihiro Fuji. Then he was a cross. So that's what he. <laughs> Now let's ride this whoop! Ahem! <clears throat> I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Yes. Mark it as... So after that startling revolution, of course, we are back into it. And we're going to choose the option, the killer is a guy. So the killer is a guy, so after finding Captain Winky, which is, um, well, you think maybe he thought she was a she, they tried getting it on, and he slipped something which he didn't expect, and then he got mad. Right, time for the next truth bullet, and what we're going for is Hero, Hero saying, and the only killer. So again, remember to shoot all the white noise, all the purple dialogue, but it is Hero and the only killer. Is it the answer? So it's coming up, coming up, coming up. And next up, here it is. Bam! Shoot it with the Y button. Job done. And we've got another truth bullet to come. I believe someone else did see the victim. Oh, it was last night. Right before night time. I saw him. Track jacket and a double. It seems. And that is when he said something. Shh. 
Chihiro told me, but why would he show Mr. Fujisaki? But Hina and I had invited. But no, you already have. Stay back to the track, Jack. Are you sure? You really think we can figure? Why? You want to trick? As was. And this type it is for Celeste's account, and we need the answer blue tracksuit when Mondo is talking. So when Mondo is speaking then, we're going to choose the blue tracksuit option. It's coming, it's coming. Mondo, blue tracksuit. Here it is. Blue tracksuit now, shoot. Bam! She never said anything about the- What are you- You just- As a matter of fact- And before we begin the- Then- So because I- No, that- And when Celeste noticed it- If perhaps- You're truing that one, it's mon- so, next up then, make sure to choose the option, the way he talked. So, the way he talked. It's not me, Mondo. You've been all over me. Judge it. Yeah! He would never do something like that. <laughs> that oh, Really? And for another reasoning, we're going to choose the option, it's Chihiro's. So, it's Chihiro's. Hey, I didn't have this wiener, it's Chihiro's. I got it! We know Chihiro's handbook was missing for a fact for him. I know. You're right. And for the next reasoning, we're going to choose by hitting its weak point. So we're almost finished with this bit, finally, but by hitting its weak point. And now, what we have to do is select someone. Who do we think? Again, if you've managed to... Um, figure out what's going on before I tell you the answer, then goddamn fair play, I want to give you one big smoochy pound. Or dollary do. Then the killer must. But how the. I... And we're gonna choose. Da -da 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 it's not Hifumi's hilarious face or. Harley Quinn's weird face there. It is Mondo! Mondo Awada! That we are going to choose. There he is, old sweet corn head. Make sure to choose Mondo. And then we've just got one more truth bullet before the manga style of closing argument. What? Mondo and Taka had an endurance. And for the contest, Mondo just so happened. And when it was all over, Mondo just. No! Wait! Hold up! Right, so we need to make a choice immediately, so we need to choose the choice, Broken E Handbook. So remember when it starts, press and hold the left bumper here, go up to Broken E Handbook, and then we need to, to find Mondo, who says, Works Just Fine. So the answer is, Works Just Fine, by Mondo. Remember to shoot all the purple dialogue, of course, as I've said. Now shoot. Nice. Again, like I said, if you miss, you will go back through the dialogue, so don't panic. But that is that for that. Now we have to do the manga style closing argument. In handbook, that isn't that one. What I mean is, I think after all, that's right. The which would mean that the hat, but doesn't that violate the school? There is a rule. Of, it's kind of a gray area. I guess you are wrong. Okay, then that way. So let's do this, huh? Let's do this thing, right? Remember, manga comics go from right to left, so what we need to do is find the gym bag with the blue tracksuit hanging out. So there it is. Again, the images will be in a random order to you, but they should still be all there. But it is the uh, gym bag with the blue tracksuit first. The handbook being used at the e-card reader with the words IN on it. So that'll be for the second one. Next, we're going to find Chihiro entering the boys' locker room with the blue door. So it's, again, should be fairly obvious which one it is. 
but it is a Chihiro, or, or Captain Winky, should we say, sorry, um, entering the uh, boys' locker room. There it is, so that's the third one. So the fourth one is the Blackened, remember that's what they are called, because we don't know who they are, working out with the dumbbell. So getting his ultra Tom Stoltman on right there. So that is that one, black and working out with dumbbell. Next, as we go over to the left, is the blood spatter of poster of the female model. So the one with close up. Um, I don't want to tell you exactly what that looks like, what kind of stain that looks like, but that is the picture that you need. Um, <laughs> close up shot, oh, damn. Uh, now it's the black and taking the poster off the wall. So that is the one. So that is the black and taking the poster of big boy the model off the wall. Next is the girls locker room, which is the red door. So the girls' locker room, just the door on its own. Next up, as we scroll over to the left, it is the blackened putting the model poster on the wall. Which uh, well, kind of looks like flat with airlines going sort of horizontally. Yeah, that'll do it. Blackened put the model poster on the wall. Next is the extension cord being held by... Bayakuya, Oya Oya Gamitoya. So the extension cord being held by Bayakuya, that is the one. Damn, he looks angry as a manga bro. Next, it is the bloodless being written on the wall. Basically, two fingers um, writing in blood, or the purple pink blood, whatever color that is. My eyes are cross-eyed and moronic today, to be honest. Next, it's outside the sauna room, which what you can see is the edge of water and the door. So that is what the outside of the sauna room looks like. And there it is, and finally it is the handbook sparking with the red floor, as if somebody has dropped it. So, as you can see on the screen, the hand, the blacken has dropped it, the handbook is smashed, and now we can press the Y button to reenact this. And then we've just got one more bullet time battle left to do. Last night, at that With bag in hand, Chihiro headed. She made her way to the lock, but. Simple. Once inside, he met with some. It seemed. And attacked it. And that's where the blood's... It was likely in the heat. And finally carrying up a... After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been flicked. And that's exactly how they ch That could have been the end if Yakuya discovered the body. So, after he used the cord to strike. Then, using the victim And around the same time that the, the killer, having already there, they planned to... And just as the killer expected... So, this is the end of this. Now, there are a couple of new things in the bullet time battle. So, if you can remember what it is exactly the first time, remember you've got to press the A button, and then when the dialogue comes on screen and it's got an aim on it, you press the Y button to shoot it down. So, this time there are Fever Time and Nega Time. So, during this battle, if you press the right bumper, it activates Fever Time, which means the tempo will be maxed, and even if you hit the wrong buttons, you won't miss. You can even press A to destroy the targets, and that's fine. But it only lasts until the focus gauge runs out. But on the other hand, the opponent can use Nega Time. So during this, your tempo marker will disappear, 
which basically means that you cannot see the marker, the small dots, the small circle dots, but you can still hit it as long as you stay in rhythm, and I will show you exactly what it means right now. So what I highly advise against, if you've got the achievement for not hitting right bumper first, then we can use it as many times as we want. But remember, press the A button, A button, A button, and then Y button. Tempo goes up lovely. But when he uses Nega Time, what we are looking at right now, the bar and the circle dots will basically turn negative, and then we will miss it, and um, yeah, things will get a little bit harder. So there it goes. So as long as you can stay in time, then obviously it gets a bit easier, but of course it will be a bit um, harder. So I highly advise pressing the right bumper to go into your own focus time, and then you can just keep spamming it right there. Otherwise it can get a bit tricky. Um, if you do end up dying or whatever, for, for, and you lose all your heart, you will just end up going back into it anyway, and I think you've pretty much got unlimited tries, so that's fine. But of course, it's always worth just pressing the right bumper and smashing up the tempo and killing him dead. Only one answer, which is the broken knee handbook, so press the Y button there. And that is pretty much the end of that. I am now going to just leave you with a whole lot of chat and then we are going. To, I'm also going to leave the cutscene on how Mondo dies, because I'm very nice like that. No choice, man. Go ahead, Monokuma. Ask for the god. Wait! No way! To Who will you elect as the? What's it gonna be? Sorry. What, what is ah! Now then, actually, ha! That's right. Hey, uh... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Correct. Indeed. Because... I knew it. What... what is this? You're wrong! Don't make me repeat my... <laughs> hey, uh...
I... Don't fuck with me. That's right. You son of a bitch! What Mondo should have said was, Come back, baby, you didn't show me your surprise. Instead of, uh, you know, smashing her across the head with a dumbbell, Mark Wahlberg style from Pain and Gain. Naturally. What? <laughs> Honestly. There is nothing to be done. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> well... That's right. <laughs> I see. What? Ha <laughs> 
Hey. What's this? You. <laughs> what? Damn. In the name of my family. You're getting all riled. <laughs> ah! Well, anyway, anyway, isn't it amazing? Fear and despair. I gotta be honest, I did laugh at, at Mondo speed. Death Nothing. as he got turned I went into Mondo Bucket. So, well, uh, anyway, here's the mystery about scene about it now. where somebody's After talking all, to Monokuma. He's still one kind you of don't want to know. goddamn person. Oh, my, my. Um, I know I uh, super so denied the all the Now, for the start of Chapter 3, it's just going to be quite a bit of dialogue. And then I'll obviously leave it as we when we are able to regain control of our character. But we should get... Our one and only achievement of the chapter, and that's two people dead. And, um, yeah, so two people dead, which was, of course, Captain Winky, Chihiro, and Mondo Suicon Butterhead instead. So we've got a crazy diamond present, which is again main, uh, it's a main key, so we're not uh, able to get rid of it. Again, I keep saving it in empty save slots just in case we need to go back to a chapter later on. There's our achievement, and then... Now, I didn't expect this, but god damn! It is Io's I know, I ass, A-double-S, -S, Ahina. I can't boing, boing, that. boing! And then we go off. So, that's it then for chapter two. We're just going to go through literally like one more minute of dialogue. And then as we regain control, I okay. will leave it there, and I shall see you in chapter three out of six, plus a couple of more videos for school mode after that. But I'll see you in chapter three anyway, guys and gals. Thanks so much for watching. Big love. Huh? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share.